Today I'm going to show you how to calibrate the Tiger Select and once calibrated we'll put it into tack mode. So it's uh, it's been on the charger here. There's a separate video that shows you how to charge the unit. I'm going to turn it on. This is the on off or the on off and enter key right here. So if I hold this down it'll start to boot up. I have for the main calibration for um, tack mode or, or to calibrate the unit, I've got isobutylene here. And when it first starts up, you'll see that we have a choice between basic and advanced mode. We want to run in advanced, so I hit OK. Okay, so now the lamp will fire and it's going to go through uh, its startup sequence. So this could take a little while and it's going to auto zero. Now you'd only do this in a clean area uh, because it's zeroing to the background air. So I have my battery level which is about half. My reading of in isobutylene uh, is the calibration gas. My memory is totally empty. So I want to go into calibration. If I hit, so underneath here the, the meanings of these keys change. So if this wasn't on calibration I could use the up down keys and these will change. And so this would be to force it to zero again. But I'm, or when this gets into um, more of the setup. So let's go back to calibration. I hit B. That button corresponds to this. And I have a choice between calibrating to the benzene tube, which is for benzene reading, or calibrate the PID for attack mode or general monitoring. So I selected PID and I hit OK. And I can either default back to factory calibration or this is a calibration done by, by a person or me today. So I want to do a, a, I'm going to do that calibration, select it, and now I'm in clean air here, so I don't have to worry about it too much, but there is a, a carbon filter. So let's just show you with the carbon filter. So I take the ends off. And on the screen it says zero and there's a countdown for 30 seconds. So I can take this filter and put it on the end of the meter. I could use some tubing, but this fits pretty good. So this is on, I hit OK. Now I'm using the carbon filter and I know this room is clean anyway, but if you were in an area where you weren't sure, then you could use that. And it's going to count down and make sure it has a good steady zero. Okay, so a couple more seconds here. Okay, the zero is complete. There's a check mark. I hit OK. Now it's asking for 100 ppm IC butylene. So I take off the carbon filter. Now I'm going to use this demand flow regulator. You can also use a, uh, a fixed flow regulator, a 0.5 liter per minute regulator. But with the demand flow regulator, the uh, pump from the meter will pull only the gas required. So I'm going to pop this here, put the end over the unit, and now the pump will open up this regulator, and I hit OK. And there'll be another 30 second countdown, so we're about 20 seconds left. It's trying to get a stable reading on the 100 ppm IC butylene. So the zero is your zero. This is your span for your VOC. Now in this unit, there's a 10.0 electron volt lamp. There's lots of different chemicals you can try to detect with this, and there's correlation factors for it. So I see the calibration worked. I can hit OK, and it'll go back, and we'll go into real-time mode. Oh, it's gonna, there's an alarm set, so I'll take this off. So we're done the calibration, and it's just going to zero back out. Okay, so I've cleared that alarm, and those alarms can be latchable or they can clear on their own. There's all settings like that in the, uh, the unit. So you can see it says isobutylene. If I want to go into tack mode, I go along here. Now what tack mode is, um, it's basically looking at uh, 
total aromatic compounds. So things like, because this was designed to screen for things like benzene, um, benzene, toluene, xylene, all those are, are kind of light and TAC type uh, compounds. So what I'm looking for here is TAC. When I find it, I hit B. And it said, do you want to go into TAC mode? I hit enter. You'll see a check mark. And then it shows TAC mode is 0.5 response factor and it just stays there for a second. And I can see that it's in TAC mode. So if I was, if I was concerned about benzene, well, mostly benzene, I could use this, go around. If I get very low readings, um, I can compare it to the ACGIH values. I'm in Canada, so depending where you are, you would compare it with your levels in your country that are the alarm levels. And so if I'm getting very low levels, I don't have to worry about benzene because it's measuring benzene and a mixture of other chemicals. So if it's very low, then there's no reason to test for benzene. Now when it starts to go up and you know, I might choose some number, like the TWA in Canada, uh, for the eight hour average for benzene per ACGIH is 0 0.5. The STEL is 2.5 for benzene. So if I was getting a higher number, then I would go from this and then use the other mode on this tiger, which is actually using a tube. So now if I wanted to screen for, I have maybe I've got styrene or something like that, or some other chemical on my, on my site, I may not want to use TAC mode. So I can actually select it again. And it says, I don't want TAC mode. I hit enter. Now it'll default back to isobutylene. So you calibrate with isobutylene and TAC mode is for benzene, toluene, xylene, like, like screening. Now let's take a look. There's other gases. If I hit B, you can go through, say, let's just take a look under K. You know, kerosene, there's all these other chemicals that it could do. Um, but we, again, for this video, I'm mostly focusing on someone that's interested in benzene, using TAC mode to screen first. Then if you get a higher value, you um, would switch uh, to the tube method to actually take a benzene reading. And the benzene calibration and testing is covered in a separate video. So, and this is how you turn it off. When you're ready, you hold down the uh, enter or on off key. That alarm is, you can select if it makes that noise or not. It's just letting you know it's shutting down. And that's the basics of how to calibrate for the TAC 